What can you do with one light for your videos? And will it look good? The short answer is yes, it can. And I'm gonna show you some lighting techniques using only one video light for interview and tutorial style videos, kind of like what you're seeing right now. Now I wanna be clear that shooting with one light is possible, but it does come with some challenges and limitations. Preferably, you'd wanna be shooting with two or more lights in these type of situations to get the look that you're going after. However, I realize it's becoming more common to shoot with one light setups because more and more people are getting into filmmaking but are oftentimes limited by either budget or the spaces that they're shooting in. Which is why I will be using an affordable video light for all of these examples called the Godox SL60W. This light is affordable no matter where most people are from, and that's why I'm using this light. I'll also throw an example using a light that's a tube style light, just so you can see the different possibilities of different types of lights. For our first setup, we'll be doing a flat lighting technique. This technique is used by many filmmakers in tutorial type of setups when they don't want a dark, contrasty, or moody look. To achieve this look, it's pretty simple. You place the light right above or a little to the side of your camera with a big soft box on it to get a soft light that fills in nearly all the shadows on the face. Because the shadows are now filled in and therefore almost missing from the face, it causes a very flat appearance due to the lack of dimension. And that's where the name for this technique comes from. From. Next up, we have the Rembrandt key light technique. And this one's actually really common for interviews and tutorials. In fact, it's the technique I'm using right now. All we do is take our key light from its flat lighting position and move it about 30 to 40 degrees to either side of the camera. We also would like to have it raised up just a little bit, not too high, maybe a foot or two above the person's head so that the light shines down a little at the subject. Now, if you're struggling to figure out if you've got this technique nailed, all you have to do is look for the Rembrandt triangle on the dark side of the subject's face. This triangle appears on the dark side of the face due to the positioning of the light. So if you're not seeing the triangle, it's possible you're a little too close to the camera still and you might wanna move a little further away, but not too far away. It is worth noting that you don't need a perfect triangle of light on the opposite cheek. It's just a standard practice. It means get it close to that, but it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle because your subject's going to move their face around after you've got this lighting down. And if you only established it for when their face is still. When they move their head, it's possible you'll get split lighting, where one half of the face is in complete shadow and one half of the face is lit. And that's not a look that typically looks really good. It's only used in very certain type of scenarios and styles. So it is okay to cheat the light a little closer to camera rather than further away, just to be sure you don't hit split lighting and still keep that Rembrandt look doesn't have to be a perfect triangle, just remember that. The reason that so many filmmakers like this look is because it gives a bit of contrast and depth to the face due to those shadows being on the face. It creates enough contrast so that you get an idea of dimension and space when it comes to looking at the subject. However, some people might find that stylistically this is still too contrasty and they don't like how dark and deep the contrast of the shadows to the light parts of the face are. So that naturally leads us to our third look, which is Rembrandt lighting with fill. So to achieve this look, we keep the key light where it is, but grab a reflector or bounce card and bounce that key light into the shadow side of the face. It lifts the shadows so that they're not so intense, but leaves a bit of them there to keep that contrast on the face so that it doesn't feel like flat lighting. Now, a cheap solution to a reflector would be a white foam board that you can grab from a dollar store or some art supply store. Additionally, you could grab a five-in-one reflector and use the silver or white side to bounce some of the light back in. The silver side will be more intense and the white side will be more soft and pleasing. And likely you'll need this to be held up on its own, so you'll want to have a small light stand and a reflector arm holder. If you don't already have these things, I'm gonna link them down in the description so that you can easily find them. Now the next technique we're gonna do is not as common, but it's a really great one to pull out every once in a while, so I'm gonna teach it to you. I would say that this one is definitely geared towards more documentary 
complimentary interview style videos. So for this technique, we take our light and we use an umbrella or a small little softbox modifier. We raise it up really high above our subject's head and put it over one of their shoulders. What you're trying to do is to get it out of frame as much as possible. And you'll probably shift your frame just a little bit to get that light to stay out of frame. Next, we take our bounce card or our reflector with the silver side and we put it opposite of our backlight in front of the subject so that it bounces that backlight into their face. Try to keep it eye level as much as possible. That looks more appealing because naturally light comes down from above. So whenever it comes from straight on or underneath especially, it doesn't look as pleasing or natural. As you can see, this look is really different. We have a harsh, backlight that has to be harsh because it's got to reach that bounce card in order to fill some in on the face, which is not quite as strong as that backlight. So it's a very different look. And for this, I, I would say it's definitely more documentary interview style. Maybe you're on the run and gun situations and it's just very moody. It's a very different feel. So for that, that's why I would say you probably want to pull this out for tutorials. So our next technique is overhead lighting, which isn't often used. It's very stylistic and you would use it only in certain types of looks or situations. But basically it does exactly as it sounds. We take that light and we're putting it overhead of the subject. In this case, I use a light stand with lots of sandbags and weights on the bottom of it to be sure it didn't flip over. Then we take a grip head with a boom arm and we attach the light to one end and raise it up on the light stand. This is the best way to get a light up overhead, but you do have to be careful because it could easily tip over if you don't have enough weight or if you don't put the light out over one of the legs. But in general, it's not a common look and it's also a little dangerous if you're not doing it properly. Our next lighting technique is more of a last ditch effort lighting technique. Maybe you can't afford modifiers or maybe you're in a I don't know what to do situation and this room is so tiny, what can I do? So for that, we have bounce lighting. Basically, you take your light two or three feet away from a white wall or a white foam board or reflector of some sort. And we take that light and we shine it right at it to bounce that light back into the subject's face, but it will also fill the room. So this could be helpful if you don't have a lot of lights and you need to fill the room with a lot of light and to light the subject's face. However, it's not a very soft look on the subject's face. It's a bit more harsh and you'll get harder shadows and it doesn't just have the appealing look of using a soft box. It's also worth noting that if you don't have a white surface for it to bounce off of, whatever color that surface is, if it's blue, orange, yellow, whatever, that color will reflect into the person's face and all throughout the room. So make sure you have a white colored wall or use a poster board if you can. Now I told you at the beginning of the video, I'd show you a technique using a tube style light. The one I'm using is a four foot long tube light that's really thin. Typically tube lights are not that soft of a look, but they do have the benefit of being pretty long. If you get something over three or four feet, it can wrap around the subject's face, acting a bit like flat lighting, but without using a modifier. Basically, all I did was take a light stand with a grip head and take this tube style light and slide it through so that I have it horizontal to the subject's face. This way the light passes all the way across the face and will also light the backdrop a little bit. This eliminates our need for a bounce board and even just a really big soft box. I would like to note that when I was doing these shots, the tube light really bothered my eyes. It messes with you. It's just not a natural thing to look at and it kind of makes your eyes feel like they're gonna go crazy. I could only realistically look at this light for about five minutes before it just really bothered me and started giving me a headache. So you should keep that in mind that this might not be the best technique to use, but it's something to keep in mind with a one light setup. Now it is possible that your budget is just so tight that with all this lighting, you can't afford a camera. All you can afford is the using your phone. So I'm gonna show you all these lighting techniques that we've done using the iPhone and compare them against the camera I've been shooting on. 